Hello everyone, do we have audio? I think we are live. My chair is coming unscrewed, hold on. This isn't right, that's gonna be annoying. Okay, I think we're live, audio is good, okay. So tonight we are working in pan pastels and colored pencils on this cute jack-o'-lantern. This reference photo came from Unsplash, but if you want to download the direct link for that, I've got that listed in the video description so you can draw along with me. And for those of you who are about to complain, why can't you put the reference photo on the screen? I have limited space and I like what I have on my screen. I had someone last week actually ask me to remove the dog so they could have the reference photo. That's cute, but no. So um, they're, they're part of the live stream. Um, you can download the reference photo and put it anywhere on the screen you want. You can put it right in front of my face, it'd be totally fine. So there is like, you don't, you don't have to complain. You can just go get it. I tell everyone every week and inevitably, actually last week I made a bigger deal out of that you can go download it and I probably had even more complaints than usual about wanting it on the screen. It's just never going to happen. Mostly because I'm a jerk and I'm just going to do the opposite of what someone tells me to do. Anyway, um, so there we go. Um, we Oh, and we are starting, speaking of the boys, we are starting the night off good from Kirsten with, hold on. Look at Wade knows. Would you like a super chat? Okay, thank you, Kirsten. Oh, look, this is gonna be tasty, huh? They're like, what, already? Oh, I actually closed this bag now. I can't get it open. There we go. That must have sounded terrible on the mic. Okay, there you go. Got, uh, you know the rules, Wade. That was nice. Very good boy. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, and he already hit his head. Okay, Gibson, go lay down. Go on, go lay down. Lay down. You can see the dragon's tank is up and finally complete. So that's pretty exciting for me. I'll be sharing at the end of the live stream, an uh, actual photo, cause that's all overexposed where you can see how everything looks, but you'll probably be seeing or hearing him jump around tonight. He's been really excited about all the extra space. So it's pretty fun. Um, lay down cow. So yeah, yeah, bad cow decide, he's got to wear a belly band. He decided to mark a few months back. So we're just not even gonna risk it. We'll just put a belly band on and he's not done it again since, but you know, actually he has two belly bands on now. He has the one, but then he decided it was fun to pull the padding out. So I had to put a second softer one, like that kind of covers the front of that. So he can't easily, yeah, bad cow is just the baddest of cows. So anyway, there we go. Um, at the end of the stream tonight, too, we're going to be talking about some Instagram scams that are hitting artists that you absolutely need to be aware of. A lot of you have probably already experienced this. Even if you've got your Facebook um, Facebook pages, your art pages, it's happening. Some of these scams are hitting. Those ones are a little bit of a different scam. Um, so, yeah, we've got lots of scams to talk about at the end of the stream. And so dragon scams. And we had a question about my favorite type of paper for me which medium because papers are very expensive. And Dragon is already jumping all over the place. He's down, look at him. He's like, hey guys, I didn't get a treat. <laughs> Nobody gave me anything. Okay, so let's get started. Tonight I am working on Cans and Me Tens. This is a black sheet of paper, although it looks kind of charcoal gray in these overexposed lights. And I've, used, I've drawn everything out on tracing paper and then I just use a piece of transfer paper, which I had over here a second ago. Here we go. And all you need to do, and I just, if you want to trace it, just trace it from your computer monitor to make your life easier. Slide that under, and then you just have to lightly go over it. And you've got your perfectly clean lines with no eraser marks all over the place, which if you are working on colored paper, especially where you want to like leave some of that color showing through, you do not want to erase or smudges. Not only does that start to damage the paper, you can see where you've messed it up from erasing too much. It will, leave, like those smudges are just, they're, they're not, they're not okay. So move that down there and I'm going to start with my pan pastels and if you do not have pan pastels just skip you can do colored pencil for this it's totally fine so we're gonna pull the lid which is stuck for some reason there we go and let's see I had a over here somewhere where did I put it there it is so I'm going to start with the upper pumpkin and let's start with the lighter color. So one side is my dirty, this is the soft tools bought from Pan Pastels and that camera is skipping like crazy. I may have to reset that, but I just flipped over the dirty side so I can use the clean side now. I wanna get as much use out of these as possible. And I am going to start with some of this red oxide type color, which is, oh, I am lucky that did not fall off the, 
let's rearrange. I've got too much stuff on my desk. There we go. You can kind of see my pan pastels there. Let's grab some of this and I'm going to throw some red in there. Or maybe magenta. I'm just mixing a few colors and a little bit of black. And I'm going to start with these darker. Oh, I lied. I was going to start with the light. Well, I guess I'm going to, I'm going to start with the dark. And I'm going to put some of these darker shadows in there. Now the big thing with this is going to be getting contrast. The reason that this guy, we want him to look like he glows, the way that you, or the reason or way that you get that is by that super high contrast between your lights and your darks. Now, as always, you can bid on this. The link for that is in the video description. Starting bid is $55 and this is a five by seven. It will come matted. So you get the cute little black mat, but that's only for the US and half the time the auction doesn't work because my website has issues that I have not yet solved. So that's a thing. Again, mixing some red, some red oxide, a little bit of black, getting that nice dark color. Now, one of the things that I see people worry about a lot, like this color I just mixed, is not the exact same as those. It is close enough. Close enough is, well, it's close enough. We have a tendency, especially if you're newer, to get really worked up over getting the exact same color. It does not need to be exact. What I want to focus on are my values. Are my lights light enough? My darks dark enough? That's what's going to make the difference. Having the perfect shade of brown, not a big deal. Is it brown? Great. Close enough. And while I've got it out, let's get some of the darker color in the pumpkin on the reflection. If you ever want to take your own photos with reflection, things like this, it's actually not hard to do. Put a piece of glass on a black piece of paper, turn the lights off. I mean, obviously there's a candle or a light inside of this. Like it's really easy to do, but that reflection is just put glass on it, something reflective. Um, if you want a white, so it actually ends up not being white, it ends up being just the colors of the glow around it. Candles, so cool on a white um, dry erase board. That is one of the best things to take photos on. You get some really cool effects with the reflection. You want to remember too, the reflections are not just evenly reversed from whatever the subject is. And I've seen people do that a lot. That used to be an old thing when people first started with Photoshop. They would just flip it upside down and think, oh, it's the same thing. It's not because the angle is going to completely change depending on how you're looking at that reflection. So it's not just an exact reverse of this. I mean, even here you can see where the eyes are a completely different shape because you're coming from under more. It's a completely different angle. can let that black show through a little bit more on the reflection. I'm going to smudge, I'm going to smudge this glow out a little bit. And I don't care if that's exact, close is close enough. You hear me say that all the time. So just looking at that reference photo. Look, already, that's actually a decent base layer to get started. We got a lot in there already. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this off and I have a Viva paper towel and old rag works as well. I'm just gonna wipe that off between colors. And if it gets too muddy, of course I can switch, but I'm gonna put colored pencil on top of this so I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna get some of this bright yellow and mix some white in with that, which you can't really see when I mix the white, but just know that that's what I did. And let's come through. White will have to go over that. And I'm just using the tip of that for the mouth. I'll clean up my edges with the pencils. And I'll be using colored pencils. And I have people ask, Pretty much every time, why don't I just use pastels? Stick with pastels since I'm using Pam Pastel Base. Because regular pastel pencils, the, there's a dry chalkiness to them that just gives me the heebie-jeebies like you wouldn't believe. I cannot, I turn into the biggest whiny pansy. Like I can't, I just can't handle the feel of pastels. I love the look, but I'm weird. So that is why. So here, darker orange. But the pan pastels, like that can get all over my hands. It doesn't, I mean, it's dirty, which I don't love because again, I'm weird, but it doesn't like the feeling doesn't dry me, freak me out like the dryness of the pastel pencils. Now, 
And if you're looking for lessons with pastel pencils, check out my friend Jason Morgan. He has great lessons. He's amazing. If you like wildlife and pastels, that is definitely who I would recommend you check, check out. And I'm just using straight orange for some of this. That camera, yeah, that camera is working. I'm just that far off. Oh, here we go. We can scooch that a bit. Oh, we have a quick, we'll stop for just a second. We've got a, wait, wait, let's see. They're not aware yet. A super chat from Crafting with Victoria Clark. Thank you so much. The boys, thank you too. Are you guys quite excited? Yeah, is this very exciting? Good boys. It's so nice to not have Wade chomping my hand for his treats. Thank you so much. The boys definitely thank you. Okay, go lay down. And she had said fat hounds. <laughs> lay down. Go on, cow. Bad cow. Bad cow, lay down. He knows that's his name. All the way. And Wade. There we go. You too, Gibson. My gosh. Okay. Thank you again. So now again, I'm just going over and making that orange a bit brighter. And we've got that same darker orange. I'm going to use that right around the edge. I'm not going to do too much of the orange in the mouth. That's going to get too small. That'll be easier to do with my pencils. And now we'll start doing some of the other oranges around the pumpkin. So most of the colors around here, these are really gonna be more of my violets, burgundy colors, and then as we get out towards these edges with the glow, it's really more of a red red. So we look at that and think pumpkin, orange. Yeah, but not there. Like the orange is gonna be on the inside because that's so dark. We're gonna be using more of, that is not on camera again. There we go, kinda. I did not set that camera up well, did I? I'm sorry. So we're gonna go more with the red. We may even be pulling more of the red oxide in there, but we want it to be kind of dark. A little bit of orange, not too much. So I'll probably layer some of the orange after the red's in. There we go, that looks great. And most of the pan pastels are fairly opaque. They show up pretty well on this black paper. And actually, let me see, now that I've got a little color on there, let me pause for a second and see if I can fix this camera. Um, I have it on auto exposure. Oh, that's way better. That actually is really accurate. Wow, it is rarely that, or very rare that these cameras are that accurate to what it looks like in person. Yay. Hopefully it stays that way and doesn't adjust as I keep working. Sometimes it likes to adjust itself. Okay. So we've got this brighter orange there. Now some of what I'm doing with the red, it is light enough, it just doesn't look like it because what's next to it isn't dark enough just yet. I'm just holding this to the side very much like if I were working with a palette knife to get these thinner areas. We've got more of that bright red. It's such a pretty red. We've got that bright red right in here. This red is actually perfect because it has an almost orangey tint to it. I'm gonna let that fade up a bit. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that red for the reflection as well in through here. I don't wanna go too crazy with it. I'll have to darken some of that back up. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of the red mixed with the orange again. Just to lighten the bottom some. So this is a combination of my orange and red. And now I need to darken some of these areas. I'm gonna use some magenta. 
red oxide, a little bit of red, and a little bit of black. So we need to darken in here. Actually, I think that's going to be easier to do with my pencils, honestly. Let's go with straight black and see if that'll darken it. Now, black is not normally my go-to darken color. It just, in this case, with the black background, like that's what works. But normally, if I'm using, especially with oranges, purple would be my go-to. But again, black background, so we're, we're a little bit different than what I would normally reach for for shadows. I just don't want you to think, because a lot of people, especially if they're new, they think that, oh, shadow black. I mean, you can use black, but it's typically going to be a, a lot more flat. More often than not, your purples and magentas are going to be a lot better. And I will be pulling purples and magentas into this when I start with the pencils. soften some of these edges with the white. Some of that I'll do with the pencil as well. And then we have the definite black line. I'm just going to get the edging right in between these two. Somebody asked if you can wash these sponges. I've heard some people said they did. However, I find I burn through them faster than I would even bother washing them. Like they're fairly kind of delicate. So I don't personally, and I always get somebody mad at me, like, no, oh, you're being wasteful. I mean, go for it. But I use them enough that I'm burning through them faster, like washing them is not going to help them last longer in my case. I say just get a big pack of them. For when they're all used up and starting to fall apart, I just replace them. And it depends on what type of paper I'm using. In this case, with the Canton Me 10s, they last a bit longer. When I'm working on sanded paper, they, I definitely burn through them faster. Okay, and I need a little area with white. I'm just gonna grab one of my little spongy guys. I don't use these, these are the, well, they're called, it's fallen out of the thing, soft tool applicators. They're like little makeup applicators. I don't use these too often, and you can use just makeup ones, but they're a little bit awkward to use because they're so tiny. Like it's easy to hit your fingers when you're trying to use them. Whereas it, like, see how that's flat versus this, you've got a big gap under your fingers as you're working. So you're not hitting your fingers on it. Put just straight white, putting that on pretty thick. And then the inside of the mouth I'll do with the, with the pencils. Okay, so that is it with the pan pastels. Let's go ahead and spray this. Move my phone out of the way so I don't spray my phone. I have done that way too many times. And I'm just going to need to do a couple of light coats over that. You can see with the Spectra Fix, it doesn't really darken it. A lot of fixatives do. And then I'm going to hair dry this. And because it's taped all the way around the edges, the paper, which is inevitably going to warp because Canton Me 10s is like super absorbent, it'll dry completely back flat into shape because it's taped down. Now, if you don't hair dry this, you just let it dry on its own. Even though it is taped down, it doesn't always dry totally flat. Sometimes it'll buckle a little bit. Drying it, I mean, not only is that speeding things up, but it makes sure it goes completely flat. And the tape that I'm using is a pH neutral. It's an acid-free tape. So this is safe to use on your artwork. I don't recommend using like blue, ma my nose itches, blue masking tape or like painter's tape because that leaves residue that can eventually cause issues with the artwork over time. It may take many years, but it's still on there. That like t all tape leaves some residue. Some framers will tell people don't use any tape. It's never safe. If you're going to, I mean, I have, I have to use it for this. Like that is the only option I have. Just go with an acid-free pH neutral. Now your other alternative, even if you want to use like a blue painter's tape, I could just cut this off. I could make my paper a little bit larger. And when I tape it, 
when I'm done with the artwork, just cut off wherever the tape was. That's another alternative. And then you can just pretty much use any masking tape you want, as long as you didn't leave it on for like years before you removed it. Okay. So now let's go ahead and switch over to the pencils. Let me put my pattern pastels away. Now, if I need to come back and soften something up with my pan pastels or change something later, not a problem. I can go back over the pencils with it. So I'm starting with my polychromos. I'm probably going to need, we'll see. I may need to grab my other pencils. I'm just, and the reason that I'm going with polychromos, you can go with any of your, your colored pencils. I could use my Karen Josh Luminance, my Derwent Light Fast, any of these would be fine. The reason that I'm going with the polychromos is I already had them out and I'm extremely lazy. So it, as long as this doesn't cause me problems, I'll stick with this. Although I don't have any glassine over here, do I? Dang it, I need glassine. Okay, I have to stop being lazy at least for that. Be right back. Hi, dragon. Okay, my tape doesn't want to start. There we go. Couldn't find the end. Iced tea, sorry. In case you're wondering, decaf green tea mixed with raspberry hibiscus. All of them are by stash. Oh my gosh, it's such a good combination. I do three bags of the decaf green to two bags of the hibiscus. I make a big, huge uh, thing of iced tea. So it's decaf. I can drink it all day, all night, no problems. And oh, is it good. It doesn't need sugar. doesn't need anything. It's just tasty. I should put that as a, a when I edit this, I will put a, I will put affiliate links in the video description. Okay. So let's see if this is going to be bright enough for me. I'm going to use right now. This is cream by Polychromos. So I'm going to lightly go over. Actually, I need to get some darker oranges. I'm almost positive I'm going to have to stop being lazy and grab my other pencils because, yeah, okay, sorry. One more, one more break here. Let me grab my other pencils. I already can tell, like, there's a specific orange that I want from my Karen Dosh Luminance. Let me put pastels over here so I don't knock them down. So I may as well just grab all the pencils. I hate it when my laziness fails me. Sorry, camera, you're gonna have to move out of the way. So the Karen Dosh Luminance, it's not just because they're more opaque, so they'll work really well for this. It's also that they're um, the specific colors that I wanted. Sometimes the, there's just a specific color in a brand that is perfect. And I just now got the notification that the auction started. Weird. Huh. Anyway, auction's up. Um, what am I looking for? Eraser or no pencil sharpener. Those are not the same things. That one's sharp. This one is not. So the Karen Dosh luminance that we've got some amazing orange colors in here. This one, if you could read them, um, this one, the writing is horrible. Cornelian. I think this is apricot. Permanent red and orange. So orange is the main one that I wanted first. Oh yeah, that is just showing up so much better. So we're fading, we've already got that really light color in there and then I'm gonna switch over. This one is my Cornelian. And then I'll switch over to that permanent red as I move my way out. So I've got that nice transition from the really bright to the definite orange. And whenever you're working on black paper, the color's never gonna be as pure as it would if we were on, I can zoom that in a bit, if we were on a white paper. So if you really wanted these colors to glow, you would actually be better off starting, come on, get in there. 
starting with white paper, that means you're gonna have to fill your background in with black and that is going to take forever. But that's gonna give you that more pure bright orange because you're up against the white of the paper. Um, I should get white out. Speaking of white. My pencils are super short. I am going to need to order some more sometime soon. So we've got that definite edge, little ridges inside there. And then we've got, what is this, the permanent, yeah, permanent red as I get out to the outer edge. Don't want to go too crazy with that one because that's going to darken it up more than what I want. But I do need it a little bit darker. That gives us a really nice transition. And then I'm going to use these same colors right now. We can use that on the inside of the nose. Let's see. And then, so I started with that cream with polychromos. Now I'm going to go with, this one is, I believe, just orange. No, cornelian. Right around this edge. And then I'll darken around that after, which will make that stand out that much more. Get a little bit more white in here. And then let's do the inside of the mouth. So we've got this brighter cream color. And this cream with polychromos is really perfect. Okay, now we're going to switch over. I'm going to use the orange. Just keep looking at that reference photo. Doesn't need to be exact. We just go for close, try to get those variations and values. And I'm adding a decent amount of pressure at this point. I am burnishing. I'm not using a super light hand because I actually don't plan on doing a million layers over here. So I can push a bit harder right off the bat. A little bit on that outer edge here and these guys. Now I'm going to switch over. This was, I believe, cornelian. Yeah. We've got even darker here. And my mouth shape is not exact. I don't care. It's a pumpkin. Like that's not something that I'm going to spend a ton of time making exact to the photo. Close is close enough. I'm going to go to the permanent red now. Um, if I were doing a portrait, then yeah, the mouth needs to be exact. But on something like this, I mean, we all carve them a little bit different. There is no need to waste too much time trying to make that exact. But I do want to pay attention. Where are my lights and where are those darks? That part I care much more about. Okay, and I think, yeah, this it color is good. This permanent red is great for that glow. Actually, there's a color called Pompeian Red. I need to grab, I think that's going to be really good over this by uh, Polychromos. Just cleaning up these edges. I want to make sure that that white line is completely covered. So the white line from the transfer paper, see how I can just go right over that. You can't see it anymore. I wouldn't try to erase that. It's not going to erase well, but like right there where it's a little too dark, no big deal. I'll just go over that with black, but it needs, the pencil has to go over it to really um, get rid of it. So I'll switch over to orange. The light is really bright just along there, a little bit on that edge. A little bit there, and a little bit here. See, these are the things you want to pay attention to on your reference photo. That is all going to add together to give that more realistic lighting look that we're trying to get. I'm going to switch to a darker orange here. And 
where is that Pompeian red? Pompeian red? I don't know. I don't say words right. Let's see if it'll show up over this much. Yeah, kind of. It's not as bright as I would like, so that was a flop. It's a good idea. It just didn't, didn't show up enough. So I'm using my orange. I'm going to lighten this a little, and then I'll go over with the reds again. But this will give me a lighter look on some of this. A little bit of a highlight right in here. And I'm going to switch over to the darker orangey reds now over that. But it'll help those to stand out more. If I just did the darker red, it's not going to show up as nicely, not over the dark paper. You can do the same thing by putting white first, but if you put white first, your end result is going to be more of a pink uh, pastel type color is not what I wanted there. I'm going to switch. This one is my cornelian. I'm going to get use the side of that just to kind of lightly create my lines, the, the glossy, glassy look. I need to define these areas a bit more. I'm going to go around those edges, but this is not as crisp at all as the upper mouth. This is much more out of focus than the actual pumpkin, the reflection I mean. I don't know why I'm rewording that. You guys knew what I was talking about, right? Let's brighten the center of this too. So this is apricot. So it's not quite as bright as the cream color I use, but it definitely shows up nicely. We've got a little bit of a brighter area here and here. And then we've got darker areas around it. Dragon's jumping around back there again. That is really giving me a nice color transition. Okay, and I want to darken some of that up. I'm going to start pulling some magentas. I think I want to go with polychromos for that. We'll find out. So I've got magenta kaput mortem for sure. That is definitely going to be a go-to. My gosh, dragon, I'm not letting you out. Please stop ruining that aloe. Did you just break another leaf on that? Okay. So we've got some kaput boredom. Let's see how this looks. That's good for darkening where it's not too dark, but I'm going to go over that with magenta too. And this one is actually called magenta. Hey, they named it something I would have named it. That's unusual. Oh, this is perfect. So pretty much any time I'm using oranges, I'm going to use magenta. They just look so pretty together, and it gives you a really nice richness, which is not showing up great on camera as far as that more magenta tone, but it's there. Yeah, this is great, and I'm pushing pretty hard with this, cleaning up any areas where the white of that transfer paper showed through. Sorry. The little board is rattling. If you wonder what that is, it's over here. It's definitely me. And it's definitely annoying. 
same thing. I'm going to use some magenta here and let that fade into the black. I need to get the hint of the nostrils on this side. That was kind of here. Just the hint. I don't want it too much. areas of that. I want to try, um, let's see, get some brighter magentas with Karen Josh. I wonder how opaque those will be. Let's find out. Oh, and a pink. Yeah, it's not really much different than the magenta with the polychromos as far as on the black paper. Very similar. So that one was a flop. Let's use a little bit of pink to get kind of a shiny spot. That works, kind of. Yeah, I think that's too pink. Nope, I changed my mind. I'm going back to my apricot then for the highlights there. It looks just white on camera, but it's more apricot. Uh, nope, that is not, where's the orange? There we go. This one's cornelian. Pull that magenta right into it. Thin that out a bit. Using the cornelian again, pulling some of these teeth up, kind of smudging this area here. Look how much more rounded this is at this angle. Completely different. I'm going to soften some of that with the black um, pan pastels. Actually, probably just with, yeah, with what's already on the brush. Softens that out nice. Didn't even have to reload it. Okay, and let's get that black cleaned up really nicely. Just about done with this guy. I'm going to pull a little bit more black in here. Again, I'm adding a decent amount of pressure. And it's not that the reference photo has black right there. Like, it's not actually black on the reference photo, but because my background is so dark, I just think it would look nice, creating a bit more contrast. Remember, you are the artist. If there is something that you think, oh, that's a little different than the reference photo, but I also think it would look really good, go for it. I'm going to put the magenta over it, though, so that it's not too flat, but it is nice and dark now. I'm going to take a bit of magenta right around that black so it transitions into the orange. Just a couple more touch-ups. Get a little bit brighter in here. Just using white right on top of that cream. So it's not really making it white, but it is brightening it up a whole lot. Don't put it everywhere though, because we still wanted a lot of the darker transitions with the oranges. And I'm gonna use, where's, there it is, my permanent red. Actually, I should sharpen that pencil first. Let's clean up those edges a bit more and we're about there. Geez, we're only 40 minutes, one minutes in. This was a quick project. I can spend a little bit more time fussing over details. So this is that darker red. See how I'm just cleaning those edges up. I'm gonna pull that out and overlap that over those magentas. Gives it a warmer glow to them. Actually, how much brighter do I want those? Do I have a, let's see if I've got any reds that are really opaque with my Karen Josh. Um, I think you're just gonna darken it. I don't think you're very opaque. Ooh, you look like a maybe. Scarlet, that's gonna be my go-to. Let's try some of this.
Ooh, that is perfect. And that shows up really nice. Just a little bit of extra red punch. I don't know if it looks kind of more orange for you. On mine, it's much, much more like red, red, like fire red. And it shows up really well because of the light colors that are under it. I'm gonna take that red right around the mouth and let that fade into the darks. tape to shut this rattle up. Let's grab some apricot and make this stand out a bit more. And I'm going to put the scarlet over it. So it stands out, but it's not too apricotty. Yes, that is a word now. And I don't know if I'm going to use orange or probably orange. Back over some of this to lighten. This is burnished pretty well, so everything, as I go over it, it's coming out really smooth. This area, let's go over the black there. I'm going to take magenta and go over that. Okay, there has to be tape somewhere. I guess I'll steal it off this. I don't think that's going to be enough, though. Let's find out. Maybe. Oh, I think it did it. Kind of. No, that's not enough tape. Taking it that way. This again is just that magenta. And I'm going to come up here with the orange again. It's going really hard here. And then I'm gonna go back out into the carmine. And again, pushing really hard, really burnishing that. So get that nice smooth glow. And then the red, this one is the uh, scarlet. I'm gonna sharpen that pencil one more time. Just going through edges, cleaning them up. That pencil needs to be nice and sharp so I can get these clean edges. And that needs to lighten. It's not standing out enough. So if somewhere, if you look at it and it doesn't feel like it's bright enough and you just can't get it brighter, it's because what's next to it is not dark enough. Same thing is in reverse. If it's too, if, you, if it looks too light, like, or too dark, no. If you can't get it dark enough, what's next to it isn't light enough, and then the reverse. Um, let's see. Let's sharpen the magenta again. Just darkening up and cleaning a few of these areas up. Not all the way around. Okay, he's pretty cute. I think he's about done, almost. 
touch up where these highlights are up here. Cute little holiday pumpkin. Or if you're weird like me, something you'll hang all year round. I like pumpkins. I keep pumpkins out all the time. I don't keep jack-o'-lanterns. I have one jack-o'-lantern that stays out. I lied. Never mind. I'm weird. I keep them all out. anything I want to touch up it look I keep looking at the screen and it's a little bit more orange from what you guys are seeing let me see if I can adjust that a bit actually I could probably just show you over here so that is yeah that's a bit more accurate there is the finished jack-o-lantern see much softer he looks much better in person they always do that camera is actually kind of terrible for getting accurate artwork but there you go and then anyone who is interested in bidding on him this will come matted, so he will be, I'll pull that over here, actually. I'm going to make this as awkward and weird as possible. There we go. So he would be in a, well, I, I would straighten it out, but he'll be in a mat like that. So he'll be ready to pop into an 8x10 frame. The artwork itself is a 5x7. And these mats, you can get them, I get them from um, Golden State Art on Amazon. The link is in the video, it may not be in the video description, it will be in the video description. Um, but those are where I get the mats, the backing, and the uh, plastic covers that go over them. Okay, so let's see. I had a few things. Um, one, somebody wanted to ask more, it's not in here now, is it? About the owl, I had it on last week. Let's see if I can pull it. Oh, it's still here. Um, what was the question? They wanted to know, so this was the owl I did in the live stream recently. Um, the one on the bottom was the one from the live stream. And then after the live stream, it didn't sell. So I was like, well, I can go ahead and take the time to go back over that, soften everything up. Do I had more time for more detailing. And I, the question on Discord, on our Patreon Discord app, somebody was asking, how do you even know to put, like the reference photo didn't have lavender in there around the back of the, the head. Yeah, but that was around the eye. So usually if I put it in one area, I'm just gonna pull that color, color into other areas of the piece. And as far as like, how do you know that you can add it in those locations? Because the goal is to make it look better than the reference photo. So how do you know where to add extra colors? Honestly, experiment and looking at other artists. I remember being at a dog show once and there was an artist who was doing pet portraits and there were, I think it was like a Rottweiler or something, um, something, a dog with a lot of black. And there were so many purples and blues. And I remember looking at that thing, how would you even know? Like it looks amazing and it looks realistic because of those colors, but how did you know to add those? You know what, the more you experiment and the more you draw and try things and step, I know we all, it's so sick of hearing, step outside your comfort zone, step outside the box, but really that's what it is. It's trying something that makes you a little uncomfortable. You're like, huh, this might look terrible, but I'm gonna try it. And copy other artists as you're learning. Now that does not mean to violate somebody else's copyright, but like I've got tons of lessons showing you how to paint black fur where I'm pulling in the blues and the purples. Copy those, see how feet, like where it's more comfortable, where you can see some, how someone else did it, and then try that on your own portraits, your own things. But like this would be a great example. Um, now I don't, this specific one, I don't have the lesson for, I didn't record when I went back over it with the lavenders and such, but that is, would be the type of thing you could do where find something that has colors like that that you like and follow that lesson. And when you then are doing your own owl, your own reference photo, then you have, you kind of have an idea of what colors you can safely add and that would look nice. So that would be that one. Okay. The next thing we wanted to go over, I made a list. Where's my list? I lost the list. Lists are no good when you keep losing them. Okay, so we had, somebody had asked, uh, paper for each medium. The paper, and we're gonna go over scammers next and I'll show you the photos of the dragon tank. But the paper for each medium, this is going to be completely personal preference. For me, let's start with colored pencil. If I'm just using colored pencil, I, my, I primarily like Arch's hot press watercolor paper. With, I don't like Bristol vellum, it's too smooth for my taste, although I've seen plenty of people use it and love it, just not for me. Um, 
yeah, the Arches Hot Press is my go-to with the, or I really like for something a little bit faster where I want to leave the background paper color show through, Can't Send Me Tans, it comes in tons of color. I love that, colors, I love theirs, which is what I'm working on tonight. Um, if I'm going to use Powder Blender, Lux Archival Sanded Paper. If I'm going to use Pan Pastels and Colored Pencil, Lux Archival Sanded Paper or Can't Send Me Tens are my go-to. I use Pastel Matte, that will work as well. Um, I don't use it often just because I'm lazy. I, I always forget I have it. Um, but that's pretty much it. Those are like my go-to papers that I use. There's not a lot of, everything else is more for scratch paper stuff. I can't think of uh, a watercolor, um, either a 300 pound or 140 pound Arches Hot Press watercolor paper is my watercolor. Same thing with ink tents. That would be my preference. So that answers that question. Okay. Art scams. This is a big one. A lot of you may have seen this where you will post something and somebody will send you a private message asking if it's for sale. And one, a huge red flag. Now that's not to say you can't have someone contact you whose English is not their first language, but it's also one of the things at this point that you're kind of like, uh, almost every scammer has, like it, it's one of those, uh, not all show breeders, like for dog shows, not all show breeders are good breeders, but all good breeders are do show breeders. They do, do are into dog shows. Like you don't have, a, there's no backyard breeder who does not show their dogs who is a good breeder, but there are a lot of show breeders who are not good breeders. So that again, not all show breeders are good breeders, but all good breeders are show breeders, if that makes sense. And that's the same thing with, in this case, not everyone whose language, you know, English is not their first language is a scammer, but all scammers, none of them speak English well. Like that's, almost every case. So that is just one of those things where when you start noticing the grammar and the wording, words that are not typically used, that's one of those things that you want to kind of, it, it's your first, huh? Your second one, which isn't always, if they mention NFT, it's a scam. And somebody's going to go, uh-uh, oh, oh, NFT, they're real. No, they're not. No one uses NFTs. No one takes NFT serious. We thought for a while, maybe that would be a thing. It was never a thing. They tried to make it a thing. It wasn't a thing. It's not going, I don't see it ever becoming a thing. So when someone contacts you, as soon as, as soon as the word NFT is involved, it is a scam. Block them. There is never going to be a case at this point in history where somebody is contacting you about an NFT and it's not a scam. So, and to anybody who is arguing about me about that, have fun being scammed. So the next one, they will contact you if something is available for sale and they'll try to flatter you and oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And they wanna pay through PayPal and you'll think, great, I'll send you a PayPal invoice, give me your email. No, no, give me yours, give me your PayPal. Why? that's not how sales are made. They want you, what they're going to do, they want to get your PayPal thing. And it's not like you have to keep your secret, but their goal is they're going to send you a fake screenshot that they paid you for it. They didn't pay you for anything. You can go log into your, never click a link they send you ever, ever, ever. If somebody messages you with any link, never click it. Not, Hey, is this painting available for sale? And here's a link to the painting. No, no. Don't, if some, never, I don't even click links from my friends most of the time, um, cause I don't trust them not to be dumb, to be idiots. Let's not swear, Lisa. So, um, love you friends, but I also don't trust your judgment. So don't click links. If they link you, this is the painting I'm interested in. No, or this here, you're violating my copyright on this painting. Don't click it. It's a, it's to get you to, it, it sends you to a file that you will usually download some sort of, of malware into your computer. Anyway, the next thing is back to the PayPal thing with the PayPal scam. What they're going to do is send you a thing saying, look, I paid now. Um, they're going to pretend there's some problem with PayPal PayPal saying I paid, but the payment isn't going through. So they're going to send you a code and I need you to give me that code so that I can verify it was paid. Like some, some they'll word it that whole thing in different ways. But there's always what they're trying to, what they're doing is trying to reset your password because they're going to change the email to theirs. So they now have access to your PayPal. They are trying to break into your PayPal account. That is all this is. They'll ask if you're open for commissions. They want to immediately send you money. Give me your PayPal. No, either you send an invoice for PayPal, or if you're serious about selling your work, have a website. And anytime someone contacts me and they want to buy one of my paintings, Here's the website. You can head over there and, and, and you check out on my website. And if that's not, and block them. I mean, it's always going to be a scam, but people are not usually going to contact you through. That's actually a bigger red flag than the bad grammar. They're not going to contact you through Instagram for a sale. In most cases, they're going to go look at your website. Every time I see something on Instagram that I am interested in buying, I look at the profile of that artist, 
find their website. Sometimes it'll be to Etsy, sometimes it'll be to a website, but either way, I go and buy it from them. I never even have to contact them. Why would I message them? There's no need. Scammers do that because they're trying to get a hold of your account. And it is really frustrating and it sucks and they'll be willing to pay almost any amount or they'll take a screenshot of your work. How much is this work? How much is this one? And you can tell, like there've been conversations. Actually, I screenshotted some. I'll read you some of the actual conversations that um, they send to people. Like these are normal. This is, there's also, I should have linked it. There's a, a Facebook group now, not that I like promoting anything on Facebook because uh, Facebook, but there is a, book, a group now for art, like art scammers beware type thing or artists to beware of scammers. And it's people sharing times where, and that's where I got these screenshots because I don't have screenshots of my own because they were all deleted. But let's go to Facebook. Oh my gosh, there's so many. Let's see, um, which one do we want to start with? One of my friends got one today. Is this item still available? He says, yes. Exchange your cell phone number, I'll call you. Okay, for my safety, can I, can I send six digit code, digits code to make sure your post is real because I got some fake posts before? He says, sure. He said, the scammer says, check your phone message. Show me that six digit number. He said, it's telling me not to share this number with anyone. I don't know if he realized it was a scam yet or not. Um, the scammer said, that's not for me because I send it from 22000, not share with another buyer. So they're trying to explain, oh no, it means for someone else, not me, you're supposed to share it with me. Don't give that code. That code is to reset your password to give them access. Never give them a code. Like this is their big thing. And that there's many different like scams to get around how they're going to do this and it always boils down to somehow they're going to try to get you to give you give them the code that is sent to you um let's see i want to verify that you are real so i need it hello um let's see just send me the six digit for justify after see again bad grammar uh this is not they are not um Amer uh, english is not their their primary language um after verification i'll call and meet with cash if you're meeting them with cash, what are you verifying they're real for? Like, it's all very bizarre. Um, gives the text. Please text my cell. I want to buy it and pay cash. Send me the code. If you are not sending the code, I'm sure you're not real. Hell scammer. So now he's, I think it was supposed to be hello. He's accusing him of being a scammer for not sending his PayPal code to reset his password. Like, this is just, ugh. Um, then he actually sends a screenshot of some girl with her boobs hanging out, flipping him off. He's like, that's not even the same girl in the profile. So yeah, this went back and forth. Um, here's another one. This one gets sent to, I get this one all the time on my Facebook. Um, I should probably shut down comments on Facebook again, or not comments, but my uh, messenger, because all I get on Facebook Messenger are page harassment report. Your account will be deactivated. This is because someone has reported you for copyright infringement page policies. If you believe your account was reported by mistake, re-verify your account to avoid getting deactivated. Please verify your account here. And it, you're supposed to click on this. You just gave yourself a virus. You just gave them access to your computer. As soon as you clicked that link, they have your Facebook, they have whatever. Um, don't click links, like seriously, I don't even trust links my friends send. Um, cause, cause they're idiots sometimes. Sorry friends, but seriously. Um, let's see another one. We have temporarily suspended your page because the content you post on this page infringes on someone else's intellectual co property rights. Confirm your account within it. YouTube does, or Facebook doesn't contact you that way. Um, Good day. I wish you a wonderful day. I'm contacting you because I'm very interested in your artwork. They have a distinct style and the color combinations are stunning. Do you currently accept me to buy your artwork as NFT? Scam. Um, I just send you the payment. Have you received the confirmation email from PayPal? The money has been deducted from my account. Kindly check your PayPal email address. Check your spam folder too. Last email I received from PayPal got held in my spam folder and I couldn't see it earlier, so check your spam folder. And it shows that they sent $4,200 to somebody. Um, hello, I really love your photos. So beautiful and unique. You really put a lot of effort in it, and wow, I really showed it. Re it really shows on them. Are they for sale? She responded, "Thank you. They're paintings, not photos." Um, the scammer responds, "LOL. All right, that was a mistake, though." 
I really need to, I need like five to seven beautiful photos from you. Can I make my selections from your Instagram posts? She, the artist says again, paintings, not photos. Most of my Instagram posts are, are sold. You would need to go to the websites. She gives her websites. Um, which of these paint work are available? She says, none of those. Send me the ones which are available. She says, as I said, go to my website. They're, they will do anything because they don't want to go to your website. They're not actually trying to buy something. They're trying to get you into this whole, sure, now I'm going to now I'm, I'm gonna send you money on PayPal. Give me your PayPal. They do not want, going to your website does them no good. That's why it's an easy way to, to filter out all scammers. Here's my website, end of conversation. Um, and, and they just go back and forth on that. Uh, let's see. I love this and I'm willing to buy it. What, what your budget? The artist says, that's not available. This is a new one. That's not available. Sorry. It's not even finished. Available paintings are all on the website. Easier to head there and you can browse what's available. The art, the scammer says, no, is not finished. I know. And oh, so not spelled right. Is not finished. But how much is it going to cost? I am ready to pay you now so you can finish it up. Like common sense. Then none of this makes sense. Um, She's like, it's only going to be available, like, and it went on explaining that. Um, here's this one, wants, um, this one doesn't even make sense. None of this one made sense. Like, she's trying to, she, this one has a form that you have to fill out in order to get, to get a price. So it's somebody, it's an artist who takes commissions. And she's like, here's the form, you need to fill this out and get it back to me. Um, no need to send anything to me mail, okay? And she go, the artist says, I need to send you the booking form as it forms a contract. The scammer says, like I said, no need for that. I was busy to look at, to look at that. The artist says, I'm sorry, I can't proceed without a booking form. It protects us both if there are any disputes and ensures I know exactly what you're ordering. The scammer says, okay, send a booking form. So the artist said, shall I send it to the email you sent the photos on? I don't know your details as the name appears to have changed. Names keep changing, by the way. She says, yes, gives her email. Of course, it's a Gmail account. Um, thank you. Or she goes, I'll send it again later today. By the way, what's the dog called? He's gorgeous. Her the scammer's response, hello? She, the artist says, hi there. Did you receive the commission form? The scammer says, I didn't receive anything yet. The artist says, I've sent it again. The scammer says, what did, you, what did you send? Why can't you just send it here? I think I'm fed up of you sending me commission form. Just let's do the, go to the business, okay? She doesn't want to do any of this. She's, trying to, she's not going to fill out a, a form. She just wants to get the PayPal thing and start the PayPal scam. I said, send your email on PayPal. Resend your PayPal. The artist says, apologies, I've not used this payment method for a while. Let me go get the details. The scammer says, okay. The artist says, can I send you an invoice? I can send you an invoice through PayPal. What's your PayPal name, um, email? The, art, the scammer says, you can just send your PayPal. I'm in my PayPal to make the payment. Again, doesn't want it sent to her. She wants your PayPal info. And then she's going to go through the whole, it sent you a code. There was a problem. It sent you a code. I need that code. So the payment goes through. Um, I've got your invoice all ready to put your um, email. I just need it. Blah, blah, blah. It goes on. Um, are we free to go with PayPal or what? Yes. Okay. Send your PayPal. It won't stop arguing. Send your PayPal. Send your PayPal. Just give it to me. I'll do it my way. It won't work when you send me the invoice. Uh, they, they Always a problem. Um, let's see. That went back and forth and... The name kept changing and that was all I had on that one. She figured out that it was a scam by this point. But this is what these scammers are doing. They are trying everything possible to get you to reset your password and get you to give the code because your password has authentication where it's going to text you and say, here's your authentication code. Don't send it to anybody. And then I love the one scammer saying, oh, it meant anyone, any other buyer. You're only supposed to share it with me as the buyer. Like you're, it just... It's dirty and it sucks. So be aware of these scams. NFT is gone. Like... That's not a thing. It's, I don't even think it's ever going to be a thing. I could be wrong on that, but it's not a thing right now. So if it's ha if you're getting these messages now or in the next five years, just know it's a scam. It's probably going to be a scam then. Um, so anyway, those are some of the things that you need to be aware of. And if you see a scam and you're not sure, post it on our MeWe or our Facebook group. We will tell you it, it is almost always a scam. So and, and use common sense too. I've seen a lot of beginner artists whose art is not worth thousands of dollars, but the, like, you know, you're, no one's going to pay thousands of dollars for your work, right? Like they don't pay thousands of dollars for my work. Do you, well, I mean, some, of them do. some, some paintings go for that much, but I mean, for the most part, most of what you're producing, probably most people aren't going to pay that. So when somebody suddenly sees your work, they happen to find you and your account with 40 followers and they're just, they are obsessed and they want to pay $4,200. I mean, realistically, you're not, 
at a $4,200 stage yet, so someone trying to throw that money at you, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So, you know, think, yes, um, sir, ma'am, a lot of these words, that's, Nick is exactly right. Um, There's certain words that they use all the time. Yeah, my budget is 500 to 6,000. 6, yep, that is, a, that, I've seen those ones too. And they, they come at you going, I've had a lot, one of the old ones, they don't usually word it this way anymore because everyone kind of figured out this one was a scam. I want to buy an anniversary gift for my wife. My budget is $5,000. What do you have in that price range? The first time I saw that, I, I think I responded to the first one because it was in the early days of that. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? Here's my website. Go shop. The end. Like, we're not having a conversation beyond that. So, yeah. And if you, this is one of many reasons you need to have your own website because it filters out so much. If you have a serious buyer, you send them to your website. Done. It is done. So, anyway, there we go. Next thing I wanted to talk about before I start answering all of your questions, I want to show you guys the dragon tank. So, we've got, where did I put the photo? So, you can see it back there. It is 120 gallons. It's four feet wide, two feet deep, and two feet tall. And let's see. This is the whole build with that. So, this was made out of, I used, uh, foam insulation boards and spray foam to build the structure. Then I used a knife and my fingers just to pick it out. I'll be making a full video of the, the process. But I picked out, like carved out the shapes from that. And then I put four coats of grout. So there's about 50 coats of sanded grout on there. Uh, or 50, or four coats totaling about 50 pounds. So each coat was about, what would that have been? Uh, What's 50 divided by four? That many. Um, I'm not doing math right now. And then, yes, I'm that bad at math. Then I did, um, so what, 1250? So maybe 1250? 12 pounds, five, 12 and a half pounds, whatever. So we went, I went ahead and um, covered it in all of the grout and then I painted it with acrylic paints and then covered all of it with Mod Podge. And that was my result, my end result. And then of course, live plants, which he thinks he should sit on top of. What's really interesting to me is that he jumps. So like from the bottom up to his upper platform, his basking platform, he jumps all the way up there. I did not know dragons could jump that much. Like he is just, he like, they, I think it's the stability because before he just had branches, there was nowhere to really jump. This gives him so, like he's been so active. Oh, now he's basking. So it's been wonderful. So there is what it looks like with the lights. You can't really tell because it's washed out on the camera, but that's pretty much what it looks like in person. Although that is being overexposed inside the tank. It looks way better in person. I've got to get good photos. And he is a happy dragon there on his basking spot. I put a cheese slate, a little area there so it would get hot enough because you want your basking temperatures. That's about 111 degrees. Um, at the hottest point. So he's got a lot of temperature fluctuations in there to lay wherever he is toastiest. But yeah, that is the dragon build. It took about six weeks. I am so glad to have that off my studio floor. It's just been, it's been behind where this is. It is, it's so weird to be able to just walk through that area now. So nice. So yeah, that is the really cool dragon tank and it's really nice too. I mean, they talk about, bearded dragons are probably one of the, and we're gonna go to your art questions in just a second, but bearded dragons are one of the most neglected and mistreated animals. Not necessarily intentional. Intentionally, the, the advice given by pet stores is atrocious. You can't have them in anything less than a 40 gallon, but they'll sell it to you in a 20 gallon. They'll sell it to you in a 10 gallon. Oh, it's a baby, it's fine. The problem is anything less than a 40 gallon, you can't get the temperatures right. You need a gradation. So like his tank where he's on his basking spot, his hottest basking, I have to use a temperature gun to check it, but it's 111 degrees. And then of course, everywhere it fades down, the coolest area of his tank for basking temperature is 71 degrees. So you need this fluctuation where he can go where he's comfortable depending to regulate his temperature. If they don't get hot enough, they can't digest their food properly. Then you have the UVB bulb. This one is a T5 uh, 10.0 uh, UVB, it's a reptosim. If they don't have that, they are going to get metabolic bone disease. Like, that's just what's going to happen. It doesn't matter how much calcium you give them, they will get metabolic bone disease. The, the wrong foods, the wrong lighting, the wrong all of this, the wrong tank size where they can't get the right temperatures. And even with the 40 gallon minimum tank, that's only for a baby. That lasted them a year and it was time for an upgrade. So the 120 gallon is really, I would not go smaller than that on an adult dragon because they get big. I mean, they're not little, he's a little undersized because he was all sickly as a baby. He's been growing fast though. Um, I don't know that he'll ever be a big, big, like as big as some of the big ones get, but 
he's still he you he is using that whole tank that whole like he is so much more active in that extra space so yeah that is his he's so cute up there basking but anyway that is what i have been working on and oh my gosh i'm so glad it's done but now matt my husband is already bugging me he wants me to build his hog nose is getting upgrade his snake is getting upgraded into the dragons she's in a 20 gallon now she's going to get his old 40 gallon i've got to sterilize it and and do a whole build so it's I don't want to start a new project just yet. I told them it's gonna be like weeks to a month before I start that one. That one will be easier because I'm not gonna do the grout method. I'll be using branches and bark and it's a different, the, the same method I use for my, my tree frog. So completely different style of enclosure. But yeah, anyway, it's a lot of work and that is what I did. Okay, now on to your questions. And let me know, oh, so next week I think is a zombie snail project. I was gonna do it this week and then I didn't plan it in time and I saw this and really wanted to draw the pumpkin, which by the way, you can still bid on. Look how cute he is. If you want a cute Halloween um, original artwork decoration, if you're a freak like me and like Halloween decorations. Okay. I'm sorry if you can actually hear me drinking the tea. I hate that sound, but also I'm really thirsty. So you guys have to suffer through it. Anyway, on to questions. We have from Heather Bryant said, have you tried washing the sponges? The Frugal Crafter um, has a great video on the sponge issue. No, because I burned through, I'm more likely to burn through them before they need to be washed. So I don't bother with it myself. Um, but I already talked about that earlier. Uh, Brittany Daniels said, have you ever tried uh, Utrecht, I can't say it, mid-price acrylic oil and watercolor paints? Are they still made in Brooklyn, New York and are good quality paint with? I I think I have some of their oils and they were fine. I want to say, weren't they expensive? There was a reason, hold on, do I still have some of theirs? If I have their oils, I believe I liked them. I think I've got a few, but the acrylics were more glossy, which is not what I love. I think I either had a sample, I don't know if you can still hear me. I'm looking through my colors over here. I don't see, I thought I could have sworn I bought some. I thought I had a white. Oh, that's Grumbacher. Yep, I do have some. Okay, so I did order some in Unbleached Titanium White. I must have gone with them because everyone else was out. Hold on, let me put that back. And I believe that it was okay, but not one that I was like, I need to have more of this brand. It was fine, but I don't know, remember what the prices were. But my normal go-to are either going to be Winsor & Newton uh, Artist Colors, just because they're fairly inexpensive and they work fine. And um, Grumbacher, I really like theirs. And I think there was one more. Um, but I mean, some of the brands of oil paints, they're very, very nice, but dear Lord, are they expensive. Like I can't afford them. They're just, especially given that I like my Winsor & Newton Winton colors just fine. I'm not picky enough that I can justify spending that much money. So that's me. Um, as far as the acrylics, they may be fine. I don't know much about their, I don't know anything about their watercolor. I, I shouldn't even say I don't know much. I know nothing about their watercolor. Their acrylics are a higher gloss and I don't like that when I'm working in acrylics. I prefer a matte finish and then I like to gloss varnish it when I'm done because the tracing and transfer uh, paper method doesn't work great. Kind of it works sometimes, depending on how much water you thinned it down with. I don't want to fight with it. It, I don't like most of those. Plus, I don't like, or I like the Liquitex Basics, it tends to dry a little bit slower than most other brands. Now, I can't say on theirs, I just know that theirs is more glossy. So, there we go. I don't know if they have a matte version or not. I guess Liquitex Basics is more of a satin finish, but it, not really matte, but it, I like it. Um, Python said, there's this brand of paint thinner called Weber Naturals. It claims to be completely non-toxic and non-flammable. In reality, it's so toxic and the flash point is really low. That does not surprise me at all. Oh, and Weber. Oh, dear God, Weber. Okay, so Weber's paint, I don't know if it's the same brand, but I know I have Weber's oil paints. There are Weber's Permalba um, white and black. I love. I bought some of their other oil paints. They were on clearance at like Hobby Lobby, clearance them out because, you know, they only carry their own brand now. But I bought a pack of them for not, I think it was like a ton of them for $15. The smell of these paints is so I don't know why they smell so bad. Uh, maybe it's a real cadmium. That would make sense. All I know is they stink. They're horrible. So I don't use any of those. But yeah, the Weber, the only products I use from them are the white and black, Weber's from Alba White and Black Oil Paint. But a lot of these, these non-toxic or, um, what was it? Natural. Natural does not mean non-toxic. And those, a lot of people misunderstand that. I mean, I was, there was a lavender, a natural lavender type paint thinner that I used. It came in one of my art box kits. 
the smell of that, it was that instant headache and my throat started to feel like it was closing up, like I had a really bad reaction to it. It was so bad and the smell wouldn't go away like on, I used it in my palette, my palette box, even though I cleaned it all out, it smelled bad for months and months and months after that. Like it just wouldn't air out all the way. It was horrible. I don't mess with any of that stuff. I know Liquitec or um, uh, either Gamsol or Mona Lisa Odorless. Mona Lisa Odorless has a lower flash point, so it's not as non-toxic as the Gamsol. It's just cheaper. Um, but neither one of those I've ever had a problem with. I just feel safer with those than the natural ones. Natural does not mean non-toxic. Now, I don't know. Yeah, them. if they're listening, that is non-toxic on top of that. That is terrifying. Um, let's see. Dolphin Soul said, when do you decide to leave the black paper versus going over it in, whoops, that just jumped, in black pan pastel like, like you did with the owl? Um, I wasn't, I didn't have enough that needed to blend out. So like with the owl, I needed the, the owl, the feathers to fade into the background more. So it was easier to blend it in with the black. Also that meant if I had any mess ups, it was very easy to fix because I already put black all over. Here, uh, it's not taking up as much space. I'm not trying to make it fade. I wanted that harsher line around the pumpkin besides the bottom part, but it's not even that faded. So it just didn't, it wasn't going to benefit me to put black all around it. Plus black up against the orange and the yellow, I'm going to be more likely to get a muddy green color than what I wanted. I don't want that really mixing too much into the, the oranges. Whereas mixing into the browns of the owls, the owls that I had done, it's not going to make a big difference. Mixing into the oranges, I'm going to start getting muddy. So there are my many reasons. Jason said, um, the top pumpkin, is the reflection supposed to be that much larger in size? It's the camera angle, and yeah, that's, I mean, that's what the reference photo has. It's the angle of the photo. And this is what I was talking about before, where if you're, I'll pull that over here while I talk about it so you can see what I'm talking about. So you can see the bottom one. It, it's a completely different angle, so it's stretching out. It's like elongated. Yeah, that's how the reference photo is. Um, it it just a matter matters on a reference photo. What angle are you taking it? What that reflection? Like the angle here, or the angle of the camera at the subject, completely affects the angle and what that reflection is going to look like uh, of the reflection. This is why I was saying before, you can't just assume it's a mirror image of the other one. It's pretty much never going to be the case. It, you're usually going to be seen slightly under. So let's say you're kind of looking on top of the subject, you're going to be seeing the reflection is going to show you the underside more, like it, it's coming at a different angle. So yeah, they're never going to be a perfect, um, I mean, I'm sure there's some scientific way to get the perfect angle where it is an exact copy, but that's not going to be the case in almost any case. Um, let's see. Karen said, how do you decide which medium you're going to work in? I just try to rotate because I work in so many mediums. I try to rotate to keep everyone happy. Um, if I work in the same medium too many times in a row, I get bored. So that's part of it. But there's really not anything more magical than I haven't worked in watercolor in a while. Let's do pick something to go with that this week. So I know not, not, a, not a fun answer or a, a, anything that's helpful in any way. Uh, Shayla said, great job on the dra dragon tank. It's beautiful. Thank you. Rose said, oh, yes, please make a video of the tank creation process. My king snake would love that. Nice. Oh, I just got a king snake, uh, um, Mexican black king snake. His name is Ramen Noodle or Ram. He's adorable. Anyway, moving on. Um, Sienna, C Siania, Siania, I just butchered your name and I apologize for that, said, I don't see you clean the palette after mixing colors. Do you clean or wipe it between projects? If it's too muddy, sure, but not normally, no. Wade, stop. Wade. He's like, but my butt itches. I have to chew it in my hindquarters. Um, no one wants to watch. Um, let's see. But no, I, my pan pastels stay pretty dirty all the time. Unless, I mean, if it gets too dirty and it starts creating mud on the work, then y'all go ahead and wipe it. But nope, I'm pretty messy. Eric said, what does heavy body acrylic mean? <coughs> it's thicker. It's really thick. So let's say if I was going to paint with a palette knife, I want to go with a heavy body because it's thick. It's going like it's chunkier. Whereas like Liquitex Basics or the Liquitex Soft Body, it's thinner. It's softer. It's got more, well, it's gooier, I guess would be kind of a way if that makes sense. Oops. Uh, Python said, I bought this tube of Gamblin Artist Oils called Permanent Orange. It's extremely vibrant. I highly recommend you check out that color. I'm just going to screenshot that and check that out. Uh, Python also said, 
this one liter thing of Gamsol, it'll last me quite a while. Yeah, that probably will. I have a gallon of Mona Lisa Odorless that I bought in 2016. I think it was 2016. Yeah, that thing is, when I run out of that, I'll probably switch over to Gamsol just because it does have a higher flash point. The more I've researched that, I'm like, yeah, okay, that is safer. So it just costs a bit more. But yeah, that Mona Lisa, I'm, I'm going to use that up first and that is going to last me forever. Oh, there we go. Joseph worded it. Soft body is whipped cream, basics is toothpaste, and heavy body is peanut butter. I See, I think soft body is thinner our soft body is a little bit thicker than the basics, at least the colors I usually use. I think those two might be reverse. Um, we have, oh my gosh, it is 922, and I've gone through all your questions. If you have more questions, if you want a demonstration on something, if you want me to, I don't know, what do you guys want to do for a while? We finished weirdly fast tonight which is kind of nice because I am weirdly tired. I made the mistake of taking melatonin that was time release. It's been time releasing all day. I can't wake up. It sucks. Um, let's see, Dalton Soul said, how do you easily create an outer, oh wait, it's easier to read this way. I think Nick just sent it to me. Yes, how do you easily create out of focus? It's so hard to be in detail mindset and then blur the other parts. Okay, so this I actually do in Photoshop. Oh, I don't have Photoshop on this computer. So what I will do, I'll try to explain this in a way that makes sense. I do it in a photo editor. So whatever your main subject is, let's say I'm painting a fox. I'm gonna cut the fox out. So he's one layer. Now I can put any layer I want for that background. It could have been the previous background. I could use the same background and just blur it. But I pick which background I want and then I put a gloss and blur filter over it, all in Photoshop. So now I can see what that would look like out of focus and I can see what the in focus fox would look like. When you're trying to, when you've got a photo where everything's like super in focus, yeah, it's really hard for your brain to understand that. Fix it in Photoshop or whatever photo editing app you, you want. Just put your subject, cut it out, fuzz out the background with the gloss and, gloss and blur, depending on how blurry you want it. There you go, done. Um, and you can try different backgrounds that way too, different blues. And that was an easy question. Long ones, give me longer questions. Um, let's see. Aline said, what digital art apps do you recommend? I have one on here. I haven't used it lately. I don't know if there's newer ones, people. I don't know what the kids are using these days, but mine is, apparently I haven't used it on this one. Oh, uh, what is it? Art Rage. Rage Art, Art Rage. I think that's the, the one that I like the most. Um, pretty sure that's the one. I'll double check, message me again, because I can't remember off the top of my head. It's on my tablet. Um, but yeah, I don't remember off the top of my head because it's not on this phone apparently. I need to do a lesson on using that um, too now that I've got the new tablet. Um, Gypsy Prairie Labrador said, I asked what you use to seal an acrylic painting. I use Liquitex high gloss varnish. So I, yeah, I just paint that on with a, a sponge brush, like a, I'll show you the brush I use. You can see it. I've got several videos where I show the varnishing process. Oh, my back is not happy with my life choices. Hey, dragon. Okay. Funny thing about bearded dragons, they look like they are always judging you. Like you are always disappointing them. Um, but anyway, this brush, you, I just use this and my Liquitex, Liquitex high gloss varnish. Now I did used to, I have a video and I may take it down and redo it because it's too easy for people to mess up. There, I used to put a light coat of a spray varnish, a matte spray varnish down first. So it kind of sealed the color that way when you do the Liquitex varnish, there's no smudging at all. The problem is if somebody puts down too heavy of a coat of that matte varnish, then the Liquitex, the gloss varnish I put on top doesn't stick as well. Like it'll beat up and there's some problems there. So I don't, you, I usually, and even with myself, I just skip that because it is easy to screw it up and just jump straight to the high gloss Liquitex varnish. Now the exception for me with that would be, let's say I have a, a background that's white and I did like black damask print and then the animal or whatever. That smudging, can, you can way too easily when you put a varnish over that, have the black smudge over the white, it's too obvious. But anything else where I don't have a white background, any smudging, like if it's minor, you will never ever notice. So I just put the spray straight gloss varnish over and we are good. Also, fly me to the moon said, fat hounds, we've got, oh, would you boys like a super chat? Yes? 
Okay, thank you, fly me to the moon. The boys are happy. Stay back, I don't need you drooling on my tea. It's a little too close to your treats, I know. Okay, thank you very much. So good, that was a nice take, Wade. My hen didn't get chomped at all. It's very nice. Okay, go lay, oh, bad cow's even laying down on his own, that's a good cow. Gibson, go lay down. You too. Cow, lay down. Everybody lays down, maybe. Gibson, down, Wade, down. Or choke on your treat. Oh, you're still chewing on it? Okay, fine, whatever. Um, thank you very much. The boys definitely thank you. Gibson, down. You're not chewing, you're just being obnoxious and ignoring me. Rotten, stubborn greyhounds, good boy. Thank you. He sighs like he's so put out by having to lay down. Um, let's see. Heather said, can you do a live with Ink Tense soon? And Rose said, I second the Ink Tense request. Yeah, why don't we do Ink Tense? Let me write that down. Let's do Zombie Snail. Well, I say Zombie Snail and Ink Tense, but that's kind of a cartoony thing, so I don't know if that's the Ink Tense lesson you're looking for. The drawback with Ink Tense is like, I, I guess I could auction it. I just have to make sure whoever buys it knows it's not like best. So yeah, I mean, my auctions don't go for, like we sell them for cheap, so it's not a big deal. But we, me and the boys, okay, there's a we. They can count as we. Um, but yeah, that is, so we want an Ink Tense lesson soon. And I had promised Zombie Snail. I think that was supposed to be this week, but I forgot. I forgot, but then I remembered and I was like, I haven't scheduled this yet. I needed to get something done quickly and we ended up with pumpkin because it was easier to schedule. Zombie Snail and oil pastels. I don't know if I'm clean enough with oil pastels because I'm out of practice with them. Um, and I'd have to do a background. I don't think I could get it done in time. Honestly, I just don't think I'm fast enough with, with them to do. Yeah, I'm gonna say no. I don't think there's any way I'm fast enough with them. I need to do a few pieces first to get like the speed. With I have to know about how long something will take me to be able to do it in a live stream, and I don't know with those. Like clouds, those are easy. I can smudge things, it's fine. Zombie snail needs to be precise, and that is very difficult to do with pa oil pastels. So it can be done, but yeah, I don't think that one's gonna work for me. Um, let's see. Whoops. Art of Raven D wants another oil pastel stream. I don't know if I'm gonna do it as a stream. No, I won't be a stream soon. I, there was a puffin. I downloaded a puffin reference photo from wildlifereferencephotos.com and I wanted to do that in oil pastels. It's a lot more involved, so it's probably biting off more than I can chew, but we're gonna go with it. So I do have a longer lesson with that coming up because I wanna get back and, and practice with those so that I can do live streams with them. The problem with them is I'm just not fast enough. Like, I don't know how long it'll take. I can't look at it and go, okay, I can get that done in an hour. So I need the clouds I can because they're clouds. But yeah, I have to get some more practice first with those to get back in the hang of it. Because um, I had not used oil pastels in many, many years when I got this new set. Um, that is a lot of sirens out there. Uh, Noctis said, you had mentioned in a recent live stream having paintbrushes made. Is there any new info on that? No, because I'm a jerk. They probably dismissed me because they need me to go through and come up with a plan of what I want. And I asked the question, like, what is the texture of this brush? And I just, I have been too busy lately and have not gotten to that. So I need to message them and see if they've not written me off. I'll message them tomorrow. Dolphin Soul, can you remind me? <laughs> she reminds me all of the random crap I forget. Um, let's see. Jay said, for your colored pencils, what pencil sharpener do you use? Do you use an electric one? I did, and I used to really like, oh, who was the brand I liked so much? I don't know. That is a lot of sirens, man. Holy crap. Um, anyway, I used to, that's distracting. Like, it's just weird to hear that many. Um, I used to use, who was it? I don't remember, and I loved it, but then I had to replace, I forget what happened to it, I replaced it, and the new one, it just was eating through my pencils. That It wasn't sharp enough, it was probably a return because I bought it on Amazon, but it was bad. So what I use now are these just little metal comb sharpeners. These are my absolute favorites. You can change the blade on them um, or replace them because they're really inexpensive, but these are my favorites. The, with the exception of Prismacolor, which I don't use anymore anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Prisma really does need an electric sharpener, but with my handheld, like. I just use these for everything. I use those and I have my 
uh, mason jar of shavings always next to me that I spill way too often. It actually recently spilled all over. I, I need to do some cleaning on the easel. It's a mess. Okay. Um, Eric said, would you show us how you would approach a portrait or a self-portrait during a stream? I don't know how to turn that into a stream. I, yeah, I don't know how I, I don't, that's so involved. That needs to be a longer lesson, like a long Patreon lesson. And I do portraits on Patreon. I haven't done one lately. I need to, but yeah, that's, I don't know how to turn that into a stream. I'll have to think about that. I, I just don't know how to turn it into a live stream because that's so involved. Um, Fly Me to the Moon said, maybe a bit of a tutorial about using Art Rage, Patreon, uh, need help. Yes, there, it, the one that I'm going to do, the digital one, will definitely end up on Patreon and on YouTube, but it'll be a full Patreon lesson with that app. So, because I know, like, so many people have tablets now, like, digital art is, it has a much lower entry fee, I guess. Gate, what do they call that? Gate enter, gate, uh, cost to enter, cost to, whatever. It's, more of us can afford it now. You don't have to go get the $3,000 Wacom tablet like you used to. Or, that God, that even got more now. It's insane. But you can get, like, just your tablet. So right now, I've got a Samsung S9 Plus that I'm going to be doing a demonstration on. But really, any, like, and you don't even have to have Apple. You can do it. I like Android. So you can do this on any of those. And our, I'm pretty sure it's Artrage is the, the program I like. And I can make, I make it simple. Use one tool. I use the airbrush tool and just adjust how opaque it is and how thin or thick the line is. You can do the entire thing, something super realistic with nothing but that tool. Because it gets overwhelming when you look at those, so a little pre-tip for you before you get started on, on, or before I do a full lesson. But it's very easy to look at all these tools. You've got an oil paint tool and a blur and a smudge and changes, and there's really cool adjustments. But when you are getting started, that is so overwhelming. Keep it simple, airbrush tool, adjust, just master that. And don't even worry about the other tools for your first, you know, until you get really comfortable, then you can start introducing the other ones. But that's the easiest way to make that work. Who is chewing? Gibson. You're not usually the itchy one. Um, let's see. These are fun questions. They keep them coming, guys. Uh, what are we? Baby Panda said, tell us about your new digital planner program and how you use and decorate it. Um, sounded interesting. Actually, let me go grab it. I, now that the artwork is out of the way, I can show you. It's easier to show you, so give me one second. You boys stay. Hi, dragon. Stop judging me. I see that judgment face. Okay, so this is one, you can see the size there. That one is the, oh look, you can see the reflection of what I see. Um, this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S9. And it is such an upgrade. My last tablet was like seven years old or six years old, I don't know. Um, which one, it was. this is the S3 or something like that. Look, the pen is magnetic and it stays in. I kept losing my last pen so much. I mean, I always found it, but it was a pain. This is so much better. But anyway, <laughs> this one has just the backing. Or this one I'm using the smart, so I'll start with just kind of the um, stuff I'm using on it or the accessories. This one is the Samsung uh, smart cover, the book. The t I don't have the front on. It's in two pieces. You can just use the back or the front. It has a little kickstandy guy. Um, where is it? So it'll stand up. It does this little origami thing in the back to stand up whether it's this way, it works both ways, this way or this way, pretty handy. Um, but this is, I just use it on the back because I'm carrying it around the house. If I were to take it somewhere with me, I would put the front part of the cover on too. I've got the tempered glass cover over it so it's protected on the front enough. I also got there the cheaper version. Not, they have two different uh, keyboards that you can get with it, keyboard covers. I got the cheaper one. I don't need the mouse pad to go with it. I mean, it's a touch screen, so why spend an extra lot of money to get that? But that is really nice too. I've used third party for all of those, uh, I, the cases and the tablet, not a huge fan. So yeah, it's definitely worth spending a little bit more or saving more. Um, anyway, moving on. So I'll show you what the actual, 
Look at how cute my wallpaper is. Okay, it doesn't look as great on the camera, but it's a beta fish. I want the whole black and gold thing. Um, let me show you the, the planner though. So this, this is, can you kind of see? So it's a fancy planner that you can put all of, um, you can do images. It looks kind of washed out and terrible here, but you get the idea. I can hand write in my to-do list and it's making it really easy. I break up my day between morning and evening because, and I nap in the middle, so everything is broken up between morning and evening, things I need to get done. But it's, um, don't have anything weird written on there. Making sure I didn't hand, sometimes I write passwords in really weird locations. So um, we're not gonna have a whole, scammer issue but it's really fun because this tap this app is called penly oh my tablet is upside down right now but it's called penly and it it is so um like we've got i haven't marked off my checks but you can it just takes you to the day of whatever it is that you need you also have the week view so i can pre-do like and have images or whatever i don't know it's just fun it's kind of like digital script like scrapbooking you've seen ladies doing this well anybody doing the scrapbooking things that like michael's or whatever that's get it gets really expensive and most of the time i tried it once when i worked at i was teaching classes at michael's i thought oh i'm gonna get this fancy paper i'm gonna do scrapbooking one i never did it two super expensive i you there's kits there's places you can buy like calypso planning or calypso the digital planning is where i got most of mine you can buy stickers you can buy all the little things all the little images to like um like i don't know if you can see there's like the little notes, it's all out of focus, I apologize. But like there's a little note tab um, where I can write, hand write all of this stuff on it. It looks in person the way the shadow is under, it looks just like scrapbooking, except it's dig digital. So I get to hoard without hoarding, it's amazing. It's so much cheaper. I mean, you have to buy a tablet. But besides that, the like packs where people make it, or you can make your own, I made some of my own into stickers and you just drag them from, you make a little sticker book and you drag them from that into your planner today. So like the days where I've got to do a water change for Ben, I've got a little beta fish there. When I've got to do my big fish, my main tank water change, I put my, um, a little sticker of my cuttlefish. Not, I don't own cuttlefish, but my cuttlefish painting. Like that's my symbol. Anyway, point is, it is really cute. I've got a thing to remember to, when to feed, like the frogs eat on certain days. It's not every day. So, well, most, some of the frogs are every day. Some of them are not. So like Glitch has to be fed on certain days so I can mark down when she's been fed because I forget half the time. Like, wait, did I feed her yesterday? Is it today? Um, Dragon, he doesn't get bugs every day. So now I can, it makes it really easy to keep track of like, which day does Dragon get his bugs? So um, versus he gets salads every day, multiple times a day. He's kind of a pig. But anyway, yeah, those, um, that, that is really convenient. But you also have Samsung. I, I, if you're doing handwriting, Samsung's obviously gonna be your best bet with Android. Um, but any of the tablets can do it. They have a, what did I write on there? Did I, have, oh, that's not the app I'm trying to pull up. Um, you are what I want. Like you can handwrite notes. This is, somebody had asked me how much my, um, my, I spent doing the dragon tank, it was about $700 total, not counting the lights, um, in case you were wondering, which is expensive, but for something like how big it is, how much stuff was involved, like that's, it's not unreasonable. Anyway, but you can just, you can, it, the handwriting features on Samsung's are, and I think most Androids are good now, but the, the pen on these I love. So you can, I do notes, like I have a, a list of everything I need to get done for the day, that, which, Okay, let's bring this back to art. If you are an artist, make, like if you work from home, make a list of what you need to do. It is so easy when you are home all day to get caught up like, oh, I'm gonna play Warcraft for a little bit. I'm gonna watch TV. I mean, not me because I don't have TV. I think we have like Netflix, but I don't really watch much. So anyway, you don't, it's too easy to get caught up doing things that are unimportant to you. If you have a to-do list, you can fit so much more stuff in there. And I just write it out in my planner or on this, um, either the planner or the Samsung note thing, either way. I need this to make sure this does not fall. You need to go somewhere safer. How about there? That works. But writing down a list, even if it's a pad of paper, whatever you want. And the way that all got started is I was, um, I was, I always have a pad of paper on my desk, but when I redid the desk, made it all pretty, the pad of paper looked terrible. So I started using my own old Samsung tablet to write notes and I was using it so often, I was like, well, now it's worth it to me to save up and buy a real, like a, a newer version of a tablet because I was getting so much use out of it. Oh my gosh, I love it. Love that. But it's so like keeping a, a to-do list, you will get so much more done in a day. Like having, 
it doesn't, I don't even schedule it like by the hour. I just have a to-do list so I can just mark off, off on the tablet what got done and what I still need to do. It makes it much easier to remember things. Oh, looks like the pumpkin is getting a home. Yay! It never tells me when I click on this. I don't think I can see who bid. No, not from here. Oh yeah, I can. Oh yay! Okay. Back to the questions. That was a lot of rambling about the tablet. But yeah, the tablet um, apps, Penly, Outrage. Outrage is the, the drawing one that I used before. And there may be better ones out now. I don't know, it's the one I'm probably gonna keep using because it worked great for me before. And yeah, that, that lesson, we will definitely have a, like one of the next upcoming lessons on Patreon is going to be that. Actually, maybe we'll do that for this coming week. That may be the next one. So the Fox, part two Fox is next week. I've got to do, I want to show you guys how you can use the coloring pages from Patreon, how like, and I'll, if you're, if you're not on that tier with Patreon, I'll give you one for free so you can try it with like intense is what I'm going to do with it with. Um, so that'll be fun. And I think we'll get a digital painting done too. <coughs> um, let's see. Um, one second, I'm just scrolling through this. I got out of order. Fly Me to the Moon said, please tell us how you photograph your artwork for prints. Do you have to use a special lights umbrellas? So no, and I, the easiest way is to watch the, I made a video specifically on that, like type in La Cree and it's just on YouTube, La Cree, how to photograph or prints or something like that. There's a video that shows you how I take the photo. I talk about the lighting. I show you, it's easier to show than to tell. Um, I use a DSLR. I do not use art of any artificial lighting because it's too hard to get perfect setup and not have glare. I use natural lighting, but in certain, I, I show you in that video what I do. So go check that out. Um, yeah, that would be the easiest way there. That's, um, it's a great question, but it's like, I've already got a video and I show you and it is so much easier to see exactly how I photograph. Um, Gypsy Prairie Labrador said, will you be doing a critique of our artwork anytime soon? Yes, I need to, I do need to do another. Uh, Python said, I've been obsessed with glazing the gal, gla I can never say that, gal, I can't mm, say it. Um, I bought about a week ago. How can I lighten the color without making it opaque? Wait, what? Lighten the color without making it opaque? You can't, I mean, if you add white, you're making it opaque and you're making it a pastel. If you're lightening it, oh, you can use a, a um, if you're using oil ones, you can use a, it kind of, it, a tra like a zinc white that's going to be more transparent so it's similar to using transparent mixing white so you still would get more of a pastel-y type color but it will lighten it while keeping it more translucent than with using like a titanium white of course it's zinc white so you know there's some issues just be careful don't eat it it is toxic if you eat um play the moon to the moon i don't have a tablet can you do it on a computer you can do it with you may be able to get the art rage like a thing for your computer but on the computer i use which i also have a lesson that i did start because i was designing a tattoo uh, for my forearm of magnolias and part way through i decided i should record this they're all pretty much the same flowers so one of those flowers i'm going to i have a video already started for you with photoshop but i do want to do a full scene for a photoshop um so on the computer digital painting too uh, Art of Raven Medea said, I want to learn, learn digital art, especially using it for sketches and ideas before I put things on physical sheets of paper and canvas. It is such a useful tool. So like you can undo things, you can have layers like, well, what if I change the sky instead of blue, I had purple, like, let's see what that looks like. It's so easy with the layers to sketch stuff out and just to get general ideas and do color compositions, such a good thing to be using. Uh, Heather said, yeah, it's Art Rage you like. Oh, I'm glad you remembered. Wait, am I telling you or telling how long I've been around? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Nick, oh, Fly Me to the Moon said, talking about photography and your art, lights, okay, got that one. Um, Angela said, how do you track the art supplies you need to order? <laughs> By accidentally ordering a whole bunch of what I already have and not the things I actually need. I will go through my pencils, so we'll use these as an example. I can see that one is really little and I need more. The problem is when I order them, I have a tendency to put them in another jar because there's not enough room. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna finish using the small one before I use the big one. But then I still think I'm out of it. And the next time I order, because it's been months and months, because I don't actually, go, they last a long time, I end up with a whole bunch of the one I was low on. A lot. A lot. So yeah, that's pretty much, I just go through every so often or I'm like, I'm gonna make a Blick order and you obviously wanna get free shipping. So I order whatever I can all at once. And I just go through like my acrylic paint, see what I'm low on. 
course, like I just said, that's how I sometimes end up with doubles because I don't realize I already ordered it and I put it to the side to finish the current one. But yeah, that's what I do. Or I go to use something and realize I'm completely out and have to make a panic order. Um, let's see, where are we at? 946. Let's see. Where are we? Whoops. Oh, I'm jealous. We've got two of you up in Maine talking about it being a rainy year. It rained like twice this summer for us in Texas. We have had the driest year I have seen. We've been in a drought since last year hit really bad, like water restrictions and all that. Um, and it never got lifted. And this year was even, I have so many plants I have to replace. After this summer was so hot and so dry, it was, but we were trying to conserve water. And I'm like, meh. They all have a lifetime guarantee with Callaways. I am just having you replaced. So yeah, that has, I'm jealous that you guys had a rainy year. We definitely did not hear. Um, yeah, nightshade for me. Yes, that is one that I am, all, that is a go-to that I run out of all the time. Um, clarifying, uh, let's see. You guys are talking about too much rain. We were the, so I guess I shouldn't say I'm jealous because we didn't, well, I don't know, we start having problems with our foundation with it this dry. Uh, let's see, Brittany said, I wish the Penley app was available to download the app store for iPads. So for you guys, I think you guys use GoodNotes is your normal. So um, the, the people, actually the Calypso whatever, Calypso, hold on, I'll find you her website. I've been following her. She has uh, live streams and stuff too and shows you tutorials on here on YouTube on using her planner stuff. And I think she's using the, the Apple version. So you can do the same thing and use the same cool, like all the layouts and stuff. And from what I understand, most people like GoodNotes better than Penley. So <laughs> Penley's gotten some like, sometimes the handwriting sticks on Penley and isn't working the way it should. And it's not an issue with that tablet. It's definitely the... Um, the app is sometimes just weird about it. If I close it, I can usually bring it back up or get it working again, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, let's see, Calypso. CalypsoCreativePlanning.com. That is where I bought most of my little stickers and stuff. The her, and then I'm using for Penley, the uh, Happy Downloads happydownloads.com, I think. I'm using her layout for the calendar, but then I'm using all the stickers and the little cutesy stuff from uh, Calypso Planning. Although I may try her, tab her planners as well. I need to make sure they work well with, with uh, Penley. But yeah, for you, those of you on Apple, you can do the same thing. Look into GoodNotes is what it seems like most people are using. Oh, somebody else, Python right after said the same thing. Um, let's see. Clark Fine Art said, Art Studio Pro is available on computer, not 100% if on PC. I know it's available for Mac. Art of, and what I'm going to show you when I do the tablet version of the, the digital painting with Art Rage, I'm going to be using that airbrush tool. You can do the same thing with any app. They all have the airbrush tool, and that's the only thing you have to modify, that opacity and width, um, width or thinness or whatever of the brush. That is all you really need to do really cool paintings. You can start with that, and that you're going to be able to do on any app. You just have, kind of have to alternate it to figure out where your, your pen is located type thing. It would be cool to see your plants outside. I'm just getting into gardening. Um, Nocta said, yeah, not right now. Half of them are dead. Anything that was in the ground, those are all fine. Um, they were all established, like my crepe myr myrtles, myr bleh, myrtles. I should, I'll do this. I need to do a spring tour after everything's refreshed. My crepe myrtles are great. They're no longer in bloom. All my, like my grasses, the um, ornamental grasses, all of that, those are all fine. Uh, yeah, I think the only thing of a lot of the stuff that were in pots, that's what really suffered this summer. So, but yeah, there's too much that needs to be replaced and cleaned up right now. Um, where were we? Um, and Lena said, how is Bubbles? Hopefully adjusted already. Yeah, she's doing great. Bubbles is my tarantula. I got her and my, uh, what was it, the Mexican black king snake? Mexican, I get the words wrong on that. Those words in some order, my snake, wrong. I got them both at the same reptile st uh, show. So yeah, she's over here in her planted vivarium and she's doing great. She's eating great, everything looks good. She's older, so we don't know how old she is because she had been wild caught, which also means parasites could end up being an issue. But the guy who had her had already had her a year himself, so chances are she had anything really bad, already would have presented by that point. So. Um, the bait, well, you get, he had babies available. The problem with babies are they are, they're not as 
sturdy. Like, not all spiders, when you have a clutch of thousands of spiders or a, whatever, um, not all of them are gonna make it. So when you only get one of those and you're hoping on that one spider to make it, it's like, eh. So anyway, I got an adult because they are much hardier, but we don't know how old she is. So they can live up to like 15 years, but all we know is she's at least five. Don't know how old, but she, yeah, she's doing great. She's so fluffy and adorable. Um, let's see. Rose said it rained once this summer in Phoenix. Yeah, that's pretty much how we were this summer. I think we had twice. There were certain areas of the DFW area that are, you know, that got rain a lot more than we did. But for us up here, we got, I think, twice. Most of the time, the rain just went right around us. Like we could see the lightning around us, but it never hit us. It really sucked. Um, Dolphin Soul, where did you get lifetime plants? Uh, Callaway's. Callaway's has a lifetime guarantee on their plants, so you pay a little bit more. But let me tell you how many times I have gone in, I'm like, here's $300 of plants that I killed um, that like didn't make it through a freeze. The freeze killed a lot of stuff um, here in Texas a couple of years ago. So they just give me, they'll, I think they'll refund you too. I just always get store credit and replace everything. So yeah, they are amazing. But if they ever get rid of that lifetime guarantee, I will not be shopping there anymore because you are paying a little bit more for that guarantee. Um, what kind of tarantula? She's a pink toe. So what is it? A, a, I can never say it. There's a, there's a real name for it and I don't know. She's a pink toe, like your basic, basic pink toe. So she's fluffy and like a blackish brown and she has little pink ballet slippers and she's adorable. Oh my God, she's cute and fluffy. So fluffy. Um, and she's sweet. Like I, I held her went the day that I got her. I haven't held her since because I don't really like, I don't want to stress her out. I don't, I don't feel the need to hold her. I just like to look at her and have a conversation because she's cute. I should have named her Charlotte, huh? Um, Python said, totally random, but have you stayed at a super fancy hotel? There's a JW Marriott in Edmonton. Apparently it's extremely expensive. I've been thinking a lot about hotels for the past week. Uh, yeah, so I met up with a bunch of friends. There were four of us girls who met up in Chicago at this super, God, what was it called? It was expensive. Her bit, her work had paid for it, but she let, had a letter, well, she snuck us in because um, there, there was room for all four of us in this room. But oh, this was a really, really fancy hotel, but... I don't know. I'm not a, I don't like hotels because bed bugs are a very real thing. And you get those in your house and you've got a lot of acrylic paintings or animals around because the only way you really kill bed bugs is to heat your house up to like 150 degrees. I forget what it is. Too hot for acrylic paintings and too hot for animals. So what do you do when you've got a reef tank? You can't heat your house up. Like if I get bed bugs in this house and they are such an issue right now, like pesticides don't work on them. Um, like nothing, nothing worked heating the house. That is how you, Matt used to work at Terminex and that was like a big call. They used to get those constantly in hotels and they all have, I don't care how nice the hotel is, somebody brought those buggers in. So you have, I'm so gonna almost use the wrong word there. Um, well, the right word, but inappropriate word. You have to check under the mattress. It's such a thing and so stressful. You're putting your luggage in the bathtub or the shower while you're checking for bud bugs. And it's just, I do not enjoy that at all. I am very paranoid after Matt having worked at Terminex. This was many years ago and it's gotten even worse since. Like the bed bug thing is LA, New York, Dallas, like these are all areas that are just anywhere highly populated. They can happen anywhere, but yeah, no, they are just, that's disgusting and no, I'm not a fan. It doesn't sound fun to me. When I was younger, the idea of staying, like when I was a kid, the idea of staying in a hotel was so fun. But now with the whole like knowing how common bed bugs are and just, no, I just want to be home. Um, how about a tarantula uh, cam on the live stream? Yeah, that would freak out way too many people. I can't even post photos safely on like Instagram without people unfollowing me. Aline said, we more, need more pictures of bubbles. Anyone who's afraid, stay, please stay clear. I think what I might do is do a, a group photo sometimes of the animals and do like a, you've been warned. Third photo in is my tarantula. Don't scroll all the way if you don't want to see her or just people need to get desensitized. Maybe that too. Um, Painter said, uh, I can't say that, said, I've never seen a bed bug before and I'm totally paranoid. Yeah, I've never seen one in person. I've only seen photos. Matt has because he had to go work the jobs to get rid of them and he's, the stories, oh, there, it's not okay. Um, and a snake cam. <laughs> Um, let's see. I don't, the snake isn't in here. She, well, right now he's in my bedroom because he's in his little baby tank because he's a baby baby, but he'll get upgraded and he'll end up in the 
little, it's like an office nook. They call it the, the planning center. I don't know, is what the builder called it. But it's like a little side office, but I have a real office, so I don't know. I don't I have a side office. That's where he's gonna end up, but there's not a way for me to get the camera over there. Um, yeah, I would rather sleep in my car. Seriously. Oh my gosh, I so understand that. Um, yeah, and mainly why I never travel. I can't do hotels. I so get it. When we moved, and we didn't even know about the, the it, and I'm glad I didn't, but I remember this nasty hotel we stayed in. We didn't realize it was going to be that nasty on the move from California here because we had to stop one night and with our truck. And I'm like, that thing's going to get broken into. It didn't, luckily. It was in, God, and it was in like um, El Paso, so not the greatest area. It was just dirty and gross and like, oh, and I didn't even know about bed bugs at the time. Um, <laughs> All right, Raven D said, I have a phobia for trip for arachnids, but I'll deal with Bubbles the tarantula than an adult male chimpanzee named Bubbles. Uh, let's see. Uh, Gypsy said, sorry if this is a repeat question, what color pencil brand works best with Pan Pastels? So it depends on what you're doing. Like on Cans and B10s, like what I did tonight, any of the brands work fine. Um, you're, any are fine. But if I'm going to work on sanded paper, like the Fox lesson that I just put up, the well, part one's up on Patreon, then that's on sanded paper. So I, I just repeated that. I'm really tired. Um, with that, I prefer my polychromos because they're so easy to blend. The only time that I'm going to use a wax-based pencil or even the Caran d'Ange, or I'm sorry, the Derwent Lightfast, which I know is listed as oil-based, but they're not really, they're really more, they have a higher wax-based content. Um, those I will only put in areas where I do not want it to smudge out. But on sanded paper, the great thing is with sanded paper and polychromos, you just take your pinky and it kind of smudges. You don't even need OMS if you don't want to. Um, I would have to use OMS to smudge out or blend out my wax-based pencils, but I wouldn't need to on sanded paper with polychromos. So polychromos on sanded paper and pan pastels um, is my go-to, but on cans and mitens, any of the pencils are fine. Um, let's see. Diatomus says, I can never say that earth gets rid of them. Not really. No, it does not. Um, turns out they hide. It, and the problem with that is, yeah, if you can get it on them, great. You're not going to get it on all of them. The way they get into stuff and they can take over a year. There have been times where years later they were still alive in a place that had not been inhabited by any people. Like there was a, it was a camp, like a kid's teen camp or something like that, a summer camp. Years later, they go back in, they were still there. They ended up having to treat it properly. But yeah, no, it's the problem with that. It would kill them if you can get it on them, but you're not going to get it on them. Not all of them. You can get some of them. You might cut back the numbers, but um, yeah, heat. Heat is the go-to. Um, uh, let's see... Clark Feiner said, yes, hotels used to be a fancy getaway, and now I would rather stay home and not have the skin crawling because you just don't know. Yep. And it grosses me out, too. You're like, Did, are these sheets really clean? Are they, like, I'm weird, though. Like, I had somebody stay overnight, oh, passed out overnight, um, at my house. <laughs> um, adults acting like teenagers. That's lovely. Anyway, the bedding, I set him up on an air mattress to let him sleep it off um, on, what is it, Friday night? I put, I have to wash the bedding again. I washed it once in my brain, because I'm a crazy person, is like, but is it really clean? I mean, I know I cleaned it once, but is it really clean? I should wash it again. I'm totally going to wash all that bedding again. I'm, 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 yes, I'm, I'm crazy. Um, let's see. I had a one uh, I can't say that I can't read that from this far away I had a wonderful idea for an alternative to pan pastel and was wondering if you would suggest doing a short here on YouTube or a long video on both what an alternative to pan pastel I don't know what the question is I'm sorry I don't think I'm reading that right gypsy prairie labradora said thank you I have a huge set of polychromos you are good then yeah our raven d boiled the entire home pretty much um Aline, <laughs> so that's what I do when I need to buy new sheets, wash it two times just in case. I know, I'm like, I don't, even a blanket, I get a new blanket, it all tells anything new. Okay, like my husband has this, oh, it's new, you can just use it. No, you can't, It's go. it has to be washed many times. <laughs> I get it. I'm glad I'm not the only crazy person. Um, yeah, <laughs> that may be Sian, Sian, I, I can never, I butcher your name, I'm sorry. Said chronic illness like fibromyalgia makes us weird and paranoid. Maybe, that may be part of it. Yay, Dolphin Soul got the pumpkin. Yay, I got goosebumps. I'm excited. I need to sign him for it. Don't let me forget to sign this one. Um, things you need to remind me of. 
Uh, let's see. <laughs> Python and bugs get in the, bed bugs get in the house, burn it down. Yeah, pretty much. Um, GT said, wanted to dip my toes into using zinc white oil. Have you had any issues with flaking? Never. But you don't put it on thick. So like if you're painting with a palette knife, you're not going to use zinc white for that. So it's, but when you thin it down like you normally would, I'm using liquid as my mixing medium. I'm thinning that down like I, all my layers are pretty thin. So it's never been an issue for me at all. Just the main thing is if you put it on too thick, that's where you're going to have the issue. Um, let's see. Aline, Mies, or Aline, said, Aline said, no, you must wash it. Imagine what goes in the, uh, the factories. Exactly what goes in the, and that's what I'm always thinking. Like, you know, people were touching that after touching other things. No, no, clothes, all of it. It all has to be washed first. Um, yes, that is, I am so with you on that. Uh, let's see. Caution Artist of Place said, I have this argument with my husband too. Factories are not clean. I'm not wearing something that hasn't been washed. Well, yeah, and you look at where a lot of these clothes are coming from, and I'm like, okay, I know that this specific geographic location is prone to bed bug issues. Like, I, we know, like, why would I not assume it's in the blanket I just bought? Now, that is a thing. Once it goes through the, the, the heat of the dryer will kill them too. So, you know, that is a bonus, but yes, um, clean all the stuff. So anyway, yeah, new stuff has chemical smells. Good, but what a weird conversation we had tonight. So it is 10.02 and we are done for the night. Thanks for hanging out with me for a ramble for an hour night. Um, yes, sign the pumpkin. I will do that tonight or late. I'll do it when I can lay it flat because it makes it easier for me to get that right when I mat it. Um, and yeah, we are good. So next week, zombie snail in something or another. I don't even think I have a proper canvas. It'll probably be paper or something like this again. Maybe watercolor and color. Watercolor zombie snail it is. And watercolor and colored pencil. Because those ones, this one was really fast. Watercolor I always take longer on. So there we go. That will be next week. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you for joining. And thank you to the moderators for helping. The links are in the video description for all of their channels. And Nick writes down all of the questions you guys have and sends it. I can't even imagine how long that takes him to copy paste all of this. So everyone thank Nick. Thank everybody, our, all the moderators. Links again for their channels are in the video description. I will see you next week for, I don't know. Oh yeah, zombies now. Bye.